Good morning, Alexander. I am so excited to have you here. You have such a story. I just want people to know that I would absolutely love it if you would leave your comments below. My discussion with Alexander is going to be broken down into three parts. We are going to talk about his introduction because he's from East Germany and he's a success and mind coach, international speaker, will be writing a book, and he's also a world-class athlete. I could go on and on, but I just want you to know I am so eager to see people understand that they can do any business that they want so long as they have the correct mindset. So I would love it if you would go on my YouTube and sub subscribe to it and connect with Alexander. So good morning, Alexander. Let's get started on your amazing story. Thank you, Jenny. It was a great introduction. <laughs> I'm Alexander Richmond. I'm a coach. I'm a success and mindset uh, coach. And I'm helping people as I see myself, you know, having a calling for helping people just in general. So, um, well, you mentioned I grew up in East Germany. Uh, East Germany was under the control of the Soviet Union at the time and made it so it, uh, a part of their communism uh, system. And uh, well, as I grew up in there, you know, not knowing any better at age six, just entering uh, school, I had been selected uh, to wrestle. Basically, I started my wrestling career with age six. We had been selected for various sports because East Germany was a very small country. And yet, uh, if you look at it in history, like always played a big part at Olympics throughout history, the modern Olympics. And through that time, you know, being a part of Olympic program, you know, was an important part for the individual as well for the country. So the selection had been done early. So at age six, when I started, I came there. The coach was speaking to all of us after we wrestled and that gave me a vision. And that's something I wanted to share. When the coach spoke you know, to all of us and I just had a feeling I could visualize as he mentioned, you know, and he pointed to a few people and he also, pointed at me, looked at me, and that spoke even more to me that he said, like, you know, imagine you could be one day, it didn't matter how you did today, but you could be one day walking up, standing on a podium, being put the medal around your neck at the national anthem place, you know, and millions of people watching you know, that event and seeing you receiving that medal and being announced as an Olympian or world champion. How does it feel? And <laughs> I don't know. I have goosebumps. Yeah. Right. Because that's how it was. I, I go through the emotions again. It really woke me up. It, you know, it touched me. Mm -hmm. And that's a vision. From there on, when you have a vision, when you have a desire, all of a sudden, you know, you see yourself and that's, you decided in that moment, that is what you want to do. It's the turning point to everything. When you have a burning desire, you create a faith, a belief in everything there is, the system, the coach, or whatever you see in that moment, right? Because all of a sudden, I believe every word he said. You have a desire, you have the faith, and you take actions. But the action, whatever the outcome is, goes right back and fuels the desire again. And having the faith, you know, well, didn't happen yet. You go on, but you see improvements. I can guarantee you if you stick long enough with it. And the issue is with so many people that they don't keep track. But we had to keep track. You know, for us, we had a journal, like for us was important as athletes early on, you get a little booklet, all your matches had been recorded. Oh. The outcomes, how you scored, you know, how did you win? By points, by, you know, pinning an opponent, 
you know, how long did it take and, and, and what was the technique? So it was very scientific. And I want to bring it on early because if you don't keep records, you know, we forget. But so many people don't have that, unfortunately. But, you know, that's why they always have to look for mentors. That's why they always have to go and look around them, you know, to create a team around their life in order to become more successful. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. I believe possible. that too. It's all a matter of your mind. Totally. Yeah, maybe. And But I, I like the point that you're making here about accountability and having the metrics, keep them written down. That is really important. Yeah, the, the biggest part is the vision, first of all. True, and, you right. Know, the, and you have to feel it. You know, it's passion. not something like I can put something, draw it on. But if I don't truly have the passion, if I don't have that fire, if I don't feel it inside. Yep. You know, then it's not quite the right one. True. Very I might, true. I might have some success, but that's not something, you know, it will not be sustainable over time. That's why and we people all can also read. If it's not your passion, they can sense it instantly. Yeah. If you're intuitive, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm intuitive. <laughs> so, so I made it, I made it to go to the Olympics, even though I got my butt kicked. Coming back after like um, was it August 5th, 6th, I don't know anymore. Um, after the ceremony, the next day we flew back to Schönefeld and in Schönefeld. At the airport, you know, they unrolled the red carpet. We didn't make it to the terminal. We stayed on the roll field. You know, the team comes out, the coaches go first and the support team and, you know, standing right and left of the red carpet. And uh, the athletes come down and everyone is sharing. You have like, we had like Pioneer, like school group, but they were there to welcome us. They had flowers and so on. Then there was music played and uh, spectators from the media as well as family and friends and others, politicians there. There were speeches held, but coming down the stairs. So my coach pulled me on the side and pointed to two guys standing on the side. And he said, like, they came to pick, pick me up. That was my arrest, even though I never was officially arrested. Wow. There were no political prisoners anywhere anyway so not that you knew of anyway right you know I got slapped around a little bit I got just a beating in my life you know I got hit from the back and you know shortly after I was out and waking up in a cell you know just like totally in pain black and blue but when I found forgiveness in that moment I'm like you know they're in greater pain all of a sudden all my rage was gone and I forgive them. so amazing that, that you I just, can let go of it like that. And I just forgave them. And, you know, in fact, I broke down crying. It, it was emotional at a time that, you know, just it was a relief. Mm -hmm. Like if the pain was like, and, and really the pain virtually disappeared. The power of a mind is uh, great. You know, it is. If you say that, you know, whatever you take on as a belief system, whatever you make it mean coming of the past, of the experience you have, because everything is experience in the past. It is. That will shift, make or break you going forward. That, will that is powerful, Alexander. That is so powerful. You know, it is, and it's so true. One day I was taken to the border. You know, from prison in the morning, early morning, they woke me up, threw me my uh, clothing and just the clothing, nothing else. You know, I found out later on, you know, I had no ID, no anything with my name on it, no money, just taken to the board. Wow. And uh, yeah, then my life started there. And that was like a totally new system. Best Germany, now capitalism. It's a new system for me. <laughs> I did not have any school papers or anything to refer back to in order to get referrals or whatever. I started totally new. 
that. So I immediately went off and uh, looked for work. And I decided I do whatever it takes. You bet. Just like yeah. in sports, you do whatever it takes. Yep. And um, I will develop from there. So, and it's always like, first is kind of like, you know, assessing your environment, what it's in, what becomes available, having your eyes open, right? That was also something as a lesson I tell some of my clients, because sometimes we just do that coming out of school, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. then we get lost because True. we can, you know, there is a way of getting even comfortable standing in manure. Oh. That doesn't sound appealing, but I can understand it. The reason why I said it that way is because people have to look where they at. How many people have excuses for not making a shift in their life because they just got so comfortable in their misery for not even looking? Wow. And you only can get comfortable through your mind if you make it that way. You see, an excuse is kind of like telling yourself about reality, which really does not exist. You know, it's an acceptance to that. And you pass it. You might complain and people complain and complain, but what are they really doing to it? You know, that's the question. Best part of being is really be open to everything and attached to nothing. Question everything. Don't take anything as what is, what is. Look at it. There's so many different points of view to get a different approach, different, you know, picture of it all, what there is. And since there's an infinite amount to any point, right? The further you go out, you can always create more distance to that point. So coming from there, there's an infinite amount. So never give up. There's always something to it. Like, you know, if you have a, an issue, there's always a solution. And another part is also whatever you call an issue was created within. And said pointing now, I could say like, you know, again, that's an issue on the outside, but really it was me. who had chosen to be a partner. You see, you're always, you can make wrong whatever it is. You can always point to the outside, but you will never get to the core of the real issue. But when you really look the issue with inside of yourself, you know, you can become so successful. That's something like a little nugget. I want to leave you here, you know, for the audience looking within. That's an important part. And sometimes it might be in our blind spot, you know, but... It is the looking, constant do you looking. Call that, do you call that the ego? No, because so many people make the ego wrong. I tell you this, the ego is very important. You know, everything is in balance. Balance is the important part. I want to say, like, if you want to focus on anything, it's balance. Balance in all areas of your life. Okay. And in our next session, I will go into that, too. Uh, because the ego is the important. If we didn't have the ego, we would not have the drive. Okay. You know, it is the ego what drives us. Oh. You know, I it's never the, thought of it that way. It's behind the desire. So, yet you have to be aware of it and keep it in check. You know. So for me. At least the way I see it, the way it occurs to me, you know, we all have different experiences and so on. There is an ego necessary in order to do certain things, you know, okay. and, and sometimes it really takes some arrogance <laughs> to go forward. And I love all the input you've given, Alexander. I can't wait for our next one. As I said, we're going to talk about entrepreneurship is a game and here is why exactly. and that is going to be our second chapter to this story i hope people subscribe and like this interview because you are so fascinating and with that i thank you very much alexander you've Thanks, given Jane. so much information i'm amazed at your background and what you went through and where you are today so i look forward to 
chapter number two. Sounds good. I look forward to it. You Thank have you. a great Thanksgiving. Talk to you. Thank then. you. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.